Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program here at Red Hat Summit 2016. Always love when we get some of the customer stories here at Red Hat Summit this year. They've been talking about the open source stories, so we're really happy to have Amadeus on, on the program here. Uh, joining us, uh, we have uh, two of the gentlemen from Amadeus. It is uh, Olaf, Schnapp Olaf Sch uh, Schnappauf, sorry, um, who is the um, CTO of Global Operations, and we have Dietmar Fauser, who's VP of Architecture, Quality, and Governance in R&D. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. All right, uh, so first of all, uh, for, for those that aren't familiar, Amadeus is in the travel industry. Uh, maybe, maybe you can give our, our audience a little bit of background on the company. Sure, um, Amadeus really is at the heart of travel. So whenever you uh, book a flight, uh, board a plane, look for your luggage, uh, it's very likely that you'll be using Amadeus. It's really at the heart of the travel industry in providing the IT services to airlines, airports, hotels, and many more. Yeah, actually, it, it's funny. When you talk to most people and you say, what is IT? It's, it's the stuff that makes stuff work behind the scenes, and mm. you guys are the stuff that makes that stuff work beh behind the scenes. Um, uh, you guys are an Innovation Award winner for, for cloud. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know, that, that project that, that led us to today? Yeah, sure. So the business push, pushed us to, to be more agnostic when it comes to the uh, environments where we run our, uh, our applications, like we, we call this multi yes capabilities uh, for various reasons uh, that I won't develop here. But it became evident that we had to run some of our very, very large clusters uh, uh, for the search uh, and availability stuff we are serving within the Google premises and surely on AWS and, and elsewhere. So we were looking for platforms that, that would be enabling this. Uh, so this was kind of two years ago. We, we did some evaluation and finally containers came into the picture. O OpenShift V3 as a container scheduling engine was there. We had good links with Red Hat and into Google. So we thought, okay, that's, it was a very early adoption, but it was, well, we were convinced that this was the, the way to go. Huh? Yeah, so you, can, can you speak a little to the, the scale of the solution that you deployed, uh, okay, kind of the, the, the requirements and, and, and scale of it? Yeah. So it's perhaps good to see the scale of our existing solution because this is basically the, the baseline of what we want to move over to the cloud platform. Huh? So Amadeus is, is a very large system running out of a central data, data center for the time being. By large, I mean, single application can go grow beyond 65, 70,000 CPUs, you know, wow. nodes. So re really huge stuff. Uh, overall, a couple of thousand physical machines, uh, 500,000 what we call deployment units, uh, 300 plus thousand transactions a second flowing into the system. Uh, so it's pretty good. Yeah. So you, you talked about uh, running it, uh, you know, operationalizing it in your own data center. You talked about using Google uh, as a public cloud. So talk a little bit, what, what does that from an operations perspective mean to, to run a hybrid cloud? A lot of people talk about it. You're, you're making it happen in reality. What are the, what are the challenges? What, what have you learned over the last you know, couple of years? The core idea is that we separate the upper layer of the stack, which includes the application uh, with OpenShift from Red Hat and all the container pieces from the infrastructure <coughs> underneath. And that's a big change. It allows us to very flexibly deploy the workload to where we want it to be. Sometimes that's in a specific jurisdiction. Sometimes that's just close to where it's consumed because and a lot of our customers also use uh, cloud platforms like uh, Google and Amazon. And uh, it's nice if these workloads are produced where they're being consumed. Mm. And thus the separation of the application part of the environment uh, from the infrastructure is key. So it's real flexible in where we can produce it. Uh, sometimes on our own private cloud when you know, data sensitivity or privacy requires that or out there uh, in the public cloud as well. And that makes it really flexible. Yeah, so this wasn't just driven by your own internal needs, it was driven by the marketplace, locality, geography, all those types of things as well. Yes, really, it's a mix of uh, requirements that make it a very powerful solution, and it allows us flexibility that running on a mainframe couldn't give us. Interesting. Can, can, can you speak at all to kind of the customer impact? What did your customers you know, see, see as the outcome once you've deployed the solution? Sure. Yeah. So, well, you, you were asking the question, so one of the concrete drivers is, for example, uh, response time of the system, SLAs. Uh, so, 
We work with a very large uh, US-based uh, hotel chain. They expect 140 milliseconds of, uh, of uh, response time for 60, 96 percentile of the queries coming into the system. So when you look at this, quickly you realize that you don't want to travel across the Atlantic back and forth for every transaction because you lose 120 milliseconds roughly on the wire. So it's, it's about a much superior user experience at the end because the systems are lightning fast if you move the computation to whether transactions are really uh, issued. Huh? And the same holds true with Google when we push stuff in, into the Google environments because uh, th this is where the transactions are produced. Huh? So it's about, it's about high availability and user experience in the sense that we, we have a much better, faster experience. Huh? Yeah, you, you talked about containers. We've heard about container announcements from Red Hat all week. You're running them in production. What, what, what does that mean? What, what's been the learning curve? Um, how did you decide containers were the right way to, to move from applications to operations? Give us a sense of what's going on in the container world for you. Mm. Sure, so containers is really a change in paradigm in what is the atomic unit that we're trying to manage. And uh, it'll be a couple of years journey from all of the legacy systems into having everything componentized into containers. It also allows us to more flexibly you know, carve up the application services to span over multiple locations, to be uh, managed in a much more homogeneous way than we were able to do in the past, and uh, really to have that ability to uh, uh, control uh, on a very fine granular basis components of the service without having to you know, micromanage the infrastructure, uh, and it's really a decoupling of the infrastructure from the service. Yeah, were you able to move both existing applications to the, to the OpenShift platform as well as new, or, or just new applications? No, it's a move of all of our application estate, oh, uh, which is not finished, uh, but it's an sure. ongoing journey. And the goal clearly is to move all of our applications to the new platform. Excellent. But the question is more whether we have to touch them when we move them on the platform or not, because it's one thing throwing an application under, under OpenShift, huh? so a container and a scheduler, and another thing is to be truly cloud-native cloud and multi-data multi center active-active. So, yeah. We talk internally about uh, replatforming or not uh, the, uh, the, the applications. So it's a mix, actually. Yeah? So you're pretty early on some of the kind of containers, the Docker and Kubernetes pieces. Can, can you take us into those, those conversations you had to have with kind of upper management, or risk assessment, things like that? It's really not a question of, of risk or, or reward. It's really to make sure that we have the flexible means to serve our customers better because it's really customer demands that require us to be agile, that require us to be flexible in where things are being produced. And uh, not least, it's also that, uh, as funny as that might sound, uh, you know, light is just too slow. If light is traveling across the globe to central production locations, as Dietmar said, uh, you know, with the SLAs that we are under for some of our services, uh, the trip across the Atlantic and back is prohibitive. And thus we need to adjust to the requirements of our clients. Yeah, we're, we're seeing all sorts of changes in the, in the transportation industry, in the travel industry and so forth. But what are some of the big things just at a technology level, whether it's around mobility, whether it's around, like you said, SLAs, what, what, what else is driving you know, things from your customers that are, that are driving you to make changes? Customer centricity. Yeah. I mean, More currently in, in, experiences. Well, well, in the industry, <clears throat> you have many individual solutions. One's, one's, one is dealing in the airport, another one is dealing uh, the reservation, mm -hmm. and you have mobile applications, but they are not very well connected around the experience of a customer. Mm -hmm. So a system like us, we have most of the, the information about the journey of a traveler, because usually we know when you fly that you also check in or, or you have a ground transportation of any kind. Huh? Yeah. So the, the, the goal currently is to, to make the whole experience much more uh, user-centric and to offer uh, services that we cannot do as long as the system stay disconnected. Huh? Gotcha, so, makes sense, makes sense. Have you, have you been to the Red Hat Summit before? Yes. Okay, can, can you give us kind of your, your take on the, the growth of the show, uh, what, what you've been doing here, uh, interactions you're mm. having with, with your peers and the like? Well, the, the growth is amazing. Uh, last year it was in Boston and we felt that it was a bit uh, too small, the location, so I think it was a good move to come here to Moscone where the, the big shows are happening. Uh, so, well, we are, we are watching Red Hat for, for quite some while. Uh, and, uh, it shows that the model is flying, actually, that, uh, that there is room for this type of business models, that uh, there, there is a large adoption across the industries, and 
I hope that they're going to grow, keep on growing because it would try and kind of show that our, our bets uh, were right. Huh? Yeah. yeah, we're really proud of having a partner that has uh, so much success that the open source movement and the community working on all of these solutions uh, are so successful and for us it's a great opportunity. Yeah, how much, you know, this show is all about community, it's all about open source. How much are you not only leveraging the Red Hat technology, but also beginning to, to contribute to these communities or just actively be involved with them? How, how has that changed in your company? Uh, we are very actively involved in a lot of the projects around it. So it's not just uh, consuming services, as uh, Paul mentioned on stage today, it's also largely contributing uh, the learnings and the fixes uh, and the extensions that we need. Yeah. We, we go pretty far, actually. I mean, we, we act very actively contribute to OpenShift. Huh? Uh, yeah. we, we have engineers dedicated to this. We had Red Hat engineers for uh, a very extended period in Europe uh, being with our teams. It was really important to us to, to understand deeply the platform because we, we adapt OpenShift to our existing uh, uh, communication systems. And that's the twist for us because we didn't want to rewrite uh, the, the, the lower layers of our stack uh, underneath the application, but plug our own uh, service management solutions uh, into the OpenShift uh, uh, service registry and orchestration uh, modules. And this is where we did a lot of co-work. We also bring batch support uh, persistency and onto the platform. So it, it's really important that big players make uh, play the game. Uh, when, once you say you go open source, you have to, you have to go open source. Uh, yeah. And we also encourage other companies to try to join us in this. Uh, so a, a company of your size and scale is you know at, at the, the kind of early edge of a lot of this technology adoption. As you look out at uh, you know. The, the, the various things that you're using. Where, where do you have kind of ask for, you know, not just the vendors, the ecosystem in general, uh, what, what things would you like to have uh, in the, to, to see from the ecosystem to make you know, your jobs and your, your, uh, your services to your customers better? So we really have a lot of work going on right now in making sure we have a, a global persistency layer because we're really moving to multi-location, multi-cloud, and there's a lot of work still to be done to define the data models that scale globally, to make sure that we have uh, data distributed properly and integrate all of that uh, with the upper layers of the stack and specifically with OpenShift. So I think there's a lot of good innovation still to be made on creating also the data models that span globally. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, da that, the yeah. data plane of the system is surely where a lot of focus coming. And monitoring would be another one. Uh, actually, there are quite a lot where I believe we can join our forces and come up with stuff that where we don't see any competitive advantage for what we are doing. I mean, that's not, we are not positioning ourselves as a platform <coughs> vendor in, in IT, yeah, so. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to give you both a, the, the last word. If, if you're talking to your peers, uh, what kind of advice do you have them for uh, kind of the technology space and what they're adopting? Mm. My, perhaps I start with this one. Yeah. My, my usual advice is, uh, be very, do, do conscious choices, and once you have done them, go down the path. Stay focused on this, invest in the technology. Don't take, especially new stuff like, uh, like OpenShift, uh, OpenStack. Don't make the error to believe that it's, it's completely industrial ready off the shelf, and you just take it, uh, hit an install button, and, and off it goes. You have, you have to be ready to invest in the people, to, to train people, to have good people, uh, and and then you, you will see that the people love it, contributing to open source uh, is, is a super recruitment tool. It, it brings you additional top-notch engineers and in-house, uh, because th they, really, they really love it. I mean, uh, working on, on a Google code base is something with which you can attract very, very good people. Mm -hmm. And it's also to really have a vision to inspire people to move to an end goal, to think forward, and to be brave. Uh, you know, it seems like a big mountain ahead of you, uh, but if you don't start the journey, you'll never get there. Mm. Uh, many people are stuck on uh, legacy systems and feel they could never go away, and I think we're a good example that you can indeed go away and uh, get to uh, you know, more flexible and more interesting platforms. Well, Deep Martin Olaf, I really appreciate you sharing the story of Amadeus. We'll be back with a wrap-up here from day two at Red Hat Summit 2016. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>